Welcome to Bami Spirit. This is the weekly intuitive astrology reading for July 11th to July 17th. For those of you who are returning, welcome back. Hello. Thank you for liking, subscribing, sharing, and commenting. For those of you who are new and feel so inclined to do so, by all means do so. We're still having some algorithm problems. It's par for the course when you do stuff on YouTube. It is what it is. But if you feel like you're missing content, it's got to be one of those things that I think, unfortunately, you kind of just have to check yourself because YouTube is like not really good at notifying people right now of my content. Um, but we'll see if that changes. We'll see if that changes. OK, mm. for those who are new, the way this works, I go over the astrology of what's going on for the week um, and I get into degrees and signs and things like that. And then I go into channeling and pulling cards. Uh, yeah. So let's dive in. This week, we have the full moon Capricorn. The thing I thought that was kind of cool, by the way, about the full moon Capricorn, it's it's 21 degrees, 21 minutes. It's happening at 21, 21, which I think is kind of neat. Uh, it is happening on the 13th of July. And on the 17th of July, Venus moves into Cancer, which personally, I feel very excited about, says the water sign. Or more water energy. Thank you. <laughs> I really like that. Uh, I do want to say fire signs like this week, you might really be missing your own energy like Jupiter's in Aries and that helps, but it's not creating any strong aspects this week, like at all. Like we have so much water and um, there's Earth, too. Oh, and I guess technically there's there's air. There's just so much water, though. There's so much water. I think you guys are really gonna be missing your element. Um, you do get a little fire this week, though, in the very beginning. Because the moon's going to be in Sagittarius at the beginning of the week, but we end in Pisces. So enjoy the fire while you can <laughs> in the beginning of the week, okay? Uh, how do I want to talk about this week? There, it's weird because it's like there's so many different thoughts in my head right now of how to talk about this week and like how to best organize it. But I feel like it's kind of a hard thing to organize for right now for some reason. This is my third time recording, by the way. Uh, let's start with perception. Let's start there. This week, focusing on yourself, your own path, your own stuff, your own desires, very positively aspected. Very, very positive. Now with relationships, there's going to be some issues. Now keep in mind, this doesn't have to be your life. When we talk about astrology and the different things that have high potential to occur or experience, it's a potential, right? You don't have to experience it. And even if you do, it's like looking at astrology just kind of helps you deal with it better. So try not to get super attached to astrology. Look at it as a way, as another way of looking at what's going on around you. Look at it that way. It's a fun discipline. Clearly, I have a lot of fun with it. But coming back to relationships this week, there's definitely a good possibility for misunderstandings, uh, conflict, frustration, confusion, a lot of miscommunication is very possible, but distorted perception of other people and also like a distorted perception of how people see you, like even like a self-image, very likely this week. And I think that's actually going to be, I was going to say issue and I heard catalyst. So it's probably acting as a big catalyst um, for our journeys this week. I do think there's a great potential too to have conflict resolution in relationships this week and to maybe have some big breakthroughs, but that's really going to be a free will choice. And not just your own free will choice, but the free will choice of other people, okay? <laughs> if anything, you could take accountability, get your closure, whatever you need, um, and move about your life the way you need to if someone else is not cooperating. But if all parties are on board to have some conflict resolution, it's very doable. It's very doable, especially if you uh, stay open-minded to allow your perception to receive some new insight and new information because we have that at play. We have distorted perception because Venus is aspecting Neptune in a square. Um, also under the full moon Capricorn, Mercury is creating an opposition with the moon itself. So, and the full moon's right in the middle of the week. So even though there are aspects happening on the full moon that are not prominent throughout the week, because it's happening on a full moon, we will really be, um, um, exposed is not the right word. We will really feel that. We'll really feel those aspects longer than the day that it's climaxing. Okay. Uh, speaking of climaxing, uh, before we continue, I do want to mention when I was doing my notes, I, I knew we were in a Pluto return for the United States. I knew that, but I did not realize it was like right now, like the peak of it. The, the United States chart, when you look at it, Pluto sits at 27 degrees and I think it's 33 minutes. And literally Pluto right now is like that. <laughs> when this week happens, it's going to be at 27 degrees, 31 minutes. 
So we are in the peak, the climax of the United States Pluto return. Personally, just speaking personally, I've been kind of <laughs> keep, keeping news and information at an arm's distance because of other personal shit that I've got going on right now. Can't handle the energy right now. I do way too much for the collective to take in more of that kind of stuff. Um, but that's very interesting. It's just very interesting to note that that is there. Um, anyway, anyway, moving on. So keep that in mind. Like the energy of this week could go really positive. You could have really cool breakthroughs, a lot of clarity, a lot of potential clarity this week. While Mercury is creating an opposition to the full moon, it is also creating positive aspects with Uranus. That is total breakthrough energy. It's, I think it's in a, I have my notes here for a reason. Yeah, sextile. I thought it was a sextile. Yeah, it's in a sextile with Uranus, and Uranus itself is also positively aspecting the full moon. That's breakthroughs on top of breakthroughs on top of breakthroughs. Um, creative thinking, um, a lot of creative solutions. Like, if you try to stay, like, in the box as far as your own perception is concerned, or if you're trying to tackle problems from a place, like, a way that you've always done it, and you're not allowing yourself to think bigger, you're going to be doing yourself a disservice. Not to say that you won't be fine. You'll probably be fine. But... There's cool potential for bigger things right now. So think of it like that. But when you start having these issues within relationships, especially with business dealings, like we have this opposition of, of Capricorn and Cancer in the middle of the week. And also overall, we have a lot of Cancer energy where it's this focus on feeling emotionally supported, feeling taken care of, right? Feeling, feeling safe. And also focusing on home and family and all of that. But it's about the emotional component of those things. Very, very feminine energy. Um, business dealings, the material world. It's like, I and I can feel it with the collective. There's such an anxiety. Such an anxiety when it comes to the material plane. Um, and money and like what things are going to look like and how we're going to live. And I totally get it. We all have a right to, you know, anyone who's feeling that way, you have a right to feel that way. I'm not going to tell you not to. Um... I'm not going to tell you not to. But that push-pull along with the opposition with Mercury and not to mention the opposition of the Sun and the Moon on the full moon itself with Capricorn and Cancer, focusing on those things from a place of fear, focusing on those things from a place of wanting control or false sense of power, scarcity, like survival mode, it's going to do you a disservice. And I know the idea of like, hey, play a little right now, like take some time to kind of have fun and nurture your own passions right now. For some, I think it's hard to swallow with the stress of all of that going on, but it also is going to be really helpful to you. It's actually going to help you to find a little bit more stability this week. Again, focusing on like the material plane in the ways I've already described is actually going to be very destabilizing because you're also not taking care of yourself while you're focusing on those things. It's like, it's an illusion, right? Again, perception. It's like, you think you're really taking care of yourself in your life, but you're actually neglecting your soul, which is just as important. Um, yeah, so something to be aware of. Towards the end of the week, we do have some Pluto energy coming in, which is in Capricorn 27 degrees, right? Um, and it is opposing Mercury and it is opposing the sun. So again, this highlighting of, even though we're out of like the peak of the full moon and we're at the end of the week, it's still technically peak because it's like four days away. But anyway, we're still in that opposition of Capricorn and Cancer, that push pull of, of matriarch, patriarch of institutions and power and society and government as we've known it. And taking care of our soul and our loved ones and what makes us feel emotionally like, okay. There's also a big mother, sorry, this is a channeling coming in. There's also a big like mother child dynamic that I'm really feeling there with the cancer, which makes sense because cancer is the mother and you can't have a mother without a child, right? Can't have a mother without a child, metaphorically speaking. Um, okay, sorry, so much coming in. Your inner child may be very triggered this week. Chiron is also aspecting Mercury. Mercury is playing a critical role this week, okay? Very, very critical. Um, I feel like the inner child is going to be screaming out a lot this week and like wanting to be protected and wanting to be safe, wanting to have that support and security. So you might feel triggered to protect your own inner child with people at this time. And it's interesting too because I'm feeling like 
people being in their wounded inner child energy, but I'm also feeling some people who are in like a very aware, conscious, like aware, conscious state of my inner child is like not safe or not happy. I'm coming in to do something about it. I'm putting in a boundary to do something about it. I'm saying something to do something about it. I'm going to take preemptive measures to make sure I am okay, but it's like, it's not from that same place. It's not from the place of I'm scared, I'm wounded, ah, right? It's like, hmm, you're affecting my inner child and I don't like it. It's like, it's very different. So some of you guys are going to be experiencing one or the other or seeing that in your own physical reality. A lot of this is just channeling starting to come in here now. In the beginning of the week, I really, really want to emphasize play. I really want to emphasize creativity, um, really focusing on your personal passions and what makes you really happy that's really going to help a lot. You might also have a lot of intuitive hits or downloads come in that actually will help you with your more material plane of your life and anything that's been stressing you out. Things are, they keep saying it, things are going to be more and more clear this week with this full moon, especially with your own personal paths and where you might be headed and where even your people around you might be headed. The North Node is also going to be sextile the sun in the beginning of the week but under the full moon it's also going to be um, positively aspected with the full moon so the clarity we get from the full moon is also going to be in the context of where we're all headed collectively and individually in our own stability and financial states um so it's coming okay more clarity is coming i can feel the anxiety man like i can so feel the anxiety there of what's gonna happen what's gonna happen what's gonna happen <laughs> are we gonna land on our feet am i gonna land on my feet what what am i what kind of my what am i gonna do for work or what are my family's gonna like i can feel the anxiety there but really try to make space for play really try to make space for passion and for pleasure try not to overindulge we still have a little bit of that going on too because venus is square neptune um so try not to overindulge too much your perception like where your perception of yourself is at and where your perception of other people is at is going to be a major driving force of the decisions you make this week and how certain things can pan out and venus being trying Saturn and square Neptune was really like that made that so clear to me because they're kind of opposing energies like they're kind of 180s of each other like Venus square Neptune is like confusion and illusion and distorted perception and affairs and you know not a good time to commit like not a good time to be in relationships paranoia around relationships feeling really unloved around relationships um being very very overindulgent be, like having a difficult time with discipline right low, low self-worth low self-image and then venus trying saturn is time to commit to commit in relationships um uh very well well aspected for social gatherings right uh can lead to success it's like it's completely opposing <laughs> and i was like that is so strange and they're almost um the same orb degrees away from each other as well and i realized oh venus is in gemini and we have distorted perception at play so it's going to come down to wherever your mind is at wherever your focus is at that's what's going to get your energy that's what's going to keep getting more fuel for the fire to keep showing up in your reality right so if you stay if we all stay in this like low self-worth low self-image doubt fear insecurity panic we're just going to get more of the same shit that stresses us out but if we do focus on the things we actually want for ourselves the things that bring us joy and being disciplined in nurturing those things that can lead to success especially if you are dealing with anybody where it's like a mentor mentee relationship um really well aspected i will say as a channeling i did get some authority figure stuff coming in and i think i got that during the capricorn reading as well the earth reading i did yesterday which i think has been up for a, a day literally anyway coming back uh authority figures is the epitome of capricorn <laughs> not the epitome but like very centered around capricorn energy and with all this cancer opposing cap not just with the full moon but also with pluto that's going to be highlighted too and don't forget mercury's also square chiron personal wounding and triggers of self-image right and like i said mercury's playing a pivotal role here so issues around authority figures issues around control 
issues around feeling like you can be an authority figure also going to be highlighted this week. So like I said, to talk about all this stuff, like I was a little bit like, how am I going to attack this? But that's what you need to know about this week. Um, now for the signs that are going to be really feeling this the most, water signs for sure. Cancers primarily, but water signs you're going to feel this week. Earth signs, particularly my cappies, you're really going to feel that this week, okay? Um, there is going to be an increase in your own intuitive and psychic awareness, like especially like any empaths. Get ready, you're going to you're going to really feel more empathic here this week, okay? Uh, try not to take on too much toxicity from people around you. I know sometimes that can be like like empath overload. So that's kind of likely to happen this week. But if you're focusing on yourself and you're being really honest with people about what you're feeling, what you're experiencing. Now keep in mind, if you're having a distorted perception, you might need to really sit down and like journal about it first, like get to a little bit more of a grounded, rational place before you go and have these conversations. But I think these conversations are very necessary. It might lead to fights, it might lead to triggers, but some of us really need to be honest <laughs> and really need to do it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because those conversations can also lead to breakthroughs with Mercury aspecting Uranus and the full moon itself. There is also, sorry, I can't, there's so much still coming through. Um, there's a big welcoming of positive changes this week too. So like I said, overall, like this is very positive, positive for the individual journey. And I think for most people, also positive for relationships in the form of healing or conflict resolution. Some of you might actually have to break away from certain relationships if you can't make that resolution because someone else doesn't want to, or it's time. Or it's just time to move on and maybe you haven't realized it yet, right? Um, so lots of clarity potential for conflict resolution, distorted perception of others in, in the context of relationships or distorted perception of yourself within the context of relationships. So just stay aware of that, check yourself on that. But there's also a time to play and have fun and nurture your own passion. A lot of breakthroughs there. A lot of breakthroughs happening with personal passions and missions. So make sure you do prioritize those things, okay? For my Cancers and Capricorns this week, this is gonna be a big, big challenge of balancing work and mission and loved ones. I know, I know, the internal challenge for, for my Cappies and, and Cancers. Um, but that's where, that that's what's it, that's, that's where it's at, that's where it's at. So like I said, water signs, earth signs, you're gonna feel this the most. Now for where all this is gonna be affecting you and your personal houses, like looking at your rising sign and like, you know, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Um, I would say Cancer 20 to 25 degrees, Capricorn 20 to 25 degrees. That's where you're feeling the opposition. That's where you're going to be, um, again, for the way that I mentioned before, uh, and also where we might see some triggering there around like authority figures and control and power and like, and this need to really nurture that cancer energy. And yes, pay homage to that Capricorn part of you that we all have inside of us, right? Because it's important. It's really important, but cancer needs to feed Capricorn right now. Think of it that way. That's probably the most helpful. The house where you have cancer and the house where you have Capricorn, let cancer feed Capricorn. <laughs> let it feed Capricorn. So for my Cancer Risings, nurturing you, your authentic self, what makes you tick, what makes you excited to be you and excited to experience life, the first house, let that feed the seventh house, okay? Let that feed relationships with other people, bonded relationships like business relationships and marriages, it arguably family or inheritance can be in involved. Um, also, any businesses that you're setting up for yourself, because there's a creative component to seventh house energy. Um, if you're doing you, you're taking care of you, you're having fun with you, you're going to naturally feed that seventh house energy. You're going to naturally feed the Capricorn part of you. Okay. Oh, yes, I think that's the best way to make sense of it. Um, Pisces. 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 This is where some illusion, some distortion can be potentially be coming up, but it can go again either way. Either way, it's how you're dealing with yourself. It's how you're dealing with your own perception of yourself in the context of relationships and other people. Um, but Pisces, 
20 to 25 degrees. 20 to 25 degrees. Uh, let's see, what else, what else, what else? You know, Uranus is interesting because it's playing a huge role with the full moon. And it is really important. I feel excitement there. Wherever you have Taurus um, in your personal houses, I'd say 15 to 20 degrees. I feel excitement. I do. I feel excitement. I almost feel, I feel confidence. That's what I'm feeling. Confidence. Okay. Tor wherever you have Taurus, 15 to 20 degrees this week in your personal houses, not your planets, your personal houses. Um, confidence. Confidence with personal changes, excitement about changes. Lean on that. I think that's going to be really grounding this week. So let Cancer feed your Capricorn house. So put a lot of focus and, and intention on Cancer and getting that to like a very healthy, happy state to, to balance out Capricorn, to feed Capricorn, to get that to where you need it to be and to have any clarity you need to come into the house of Capricorn where you've been having confusion, okay? But let Taurus be a good, confident, grounding, exciting force for you. So I say Cancer Risings a lot because it's my... I'm a Cancer Rising, so it's just easier, but I can also use other examples. Um, but for my Cancer Risings, so focusing on you, your fun, your play, your passions, all of that, what makes you you authentically, your own self-image. Um, some of you might need to work on some self-worth. That just came in really strong. Some self-worth and definitely some codependent relationships and definitely some addictions. That just came up really strong um, within and without. So those that affect, oh, your whole being. So, cause it's like, they're showing me like outside the body and inside the body. Um, that's so interesting. So yeah, it's it's all of you, all of your being, but the, the vessel seems to be highlighted here too for you cancers. Anyway, so focusing on getting that to a healthy state will naturally help you with your seventh house, with any, especially business dealings, negotiations that you've been uh, confused about, relationships you've been confused about, people you feel bonded and obligated to that you've been feeling very confused about, I'm actually being stifled by, negatively affected by. So cancers, cancers, don't know that cancers, cancers, cancer risings, um, you might be breaking away from some people um, through reform of the self, okay? But where Taurus is for you, 11th house, for most of my cancer risings, 15 to 20 degrees, that's where you're gonna be excited. That's where you're gonna find your excitement in life. That's where you're gonna feel your confidence in life. That's wish fulfillment, that's hopes, dreams, um, communication through technology, which is also very positively aspected this week. Communication through technology, um, finding clarity through technology. So I'm feeling a lot of research there. Um, I almost feel a little bit of like a rabbit hole of like fi like finding something that gets you excited and just learning everything about it. Um, invest to invest in it long term, which I think is going to directly affect your seventh house. Um, yes. Anyway, so that that's an example of how to look at those energies. Okay. I want to move on. <laughs> I want to move on to some cards. I can hear you guys like like wanting me to do other ones, like for Pisces rising or Virgo rising. Um, okay, I'll pick one more. I'll pick one more. You know what? I'll I'll have a card help me with that. What rising sign should I do next? And then I'm going to cards. What rising sign should I do next? Actually, you know what? Let's do it that way moving forward. I like that. Maybe I won't even use cards this time. We're working on the fly. All right. Well, do I have time to do this? E I mm -hmm. We'll see. We'll see if I have time to do this. All right. Let me just get these all written down so I, like, I did that backwards. <laughs> Cancer. Leo. Virgo. Libra. Scorpio, Sag, Cap, Aqua, and Pisces. All right, so I did Cancer. I really hope somebody timestamps this. I really might not have time to timestamp all these later. Um, you know what? Let's just fall to Scorpio. Let's fall to Scorpio, okay? So for Scorpio, we are looking at... We have Cancer, and we have Cap, and... Taurus, because Taurus is a grounding force for everybody. Okay, so if you're Scorpio rising, oh, so 
your grounding force is your seventh house for my Scorp Risings. And that would make Cancer your ninth house, which would make Capricorn your third house. Oh, so you want to feed your ninth house. I think that works really well for my Scorpios, honestly. <laughs> Just being honest. Yeah, okay. Spiritual. Very, very spiritual week for my Scorpios. Um, that's how you're learning. Travel, I think, is going to... Yes, I'm hearing yes. So Scorpios, travel this week might be really positively aspected for you, really leaning into um, some spontaneity with that, is what I'm hearing, some spontaneity with that. Um, but this is about expanding your, your knowledge base, and I feel like it's really... I actually want to say it's about the self, but through the spiritual lens. Um, it's not just like the psychological part of exploring yourself. Um, but how it has affected other people, how you've affected other people. Uh, I'm hearing awakening for some of you. I'm hearing awakening. Yeah, I feel like Scorpios, you're, you're in the mode of like a spiritual journey, okay? So like you're in the mode of a spiritual journey this week. Even if it's like you got to go on a vision quest, you got to go away, or you got to be a hermit, um, it's a spiritual journey week for you, okay? That's actually going to facilitate better relationships. Thank you more. I heard relating. Uh, that's going to improve how you relate to, to other people, how you interact with other people, especially when making friends. So some of you guys, if you really prioritize that, like in the first half of the week, of going on a little bit of a spiritual journey, by the end of the week, you could be making a lot of new friends. You could be meeting a lot of new people a lot of new people there your grounding force is going to be your seventh house so any relationships like marriages or people that you consider partners really grounding for you this week um also any creative endeavors that your passion is really intertwined with use that as your grounding force like don't like ignore that this week even if you're on a spiritual journey still connect to people that you are bonded to in that way especially anybody who is also spiritual in their own right or even a mentor in their own right really nurture those relationships um and see what that what that births you but you're in, in you're in spiritual journ mode scorpios okay pisces let's do pisces Let's see, Pisces. For Pisces, that would make, got kind of do all this backwards. Aquarius is 12th. Capricorn is 11th, which would make Cancer your fifth. And Taurus, where does that put Taurus? Third. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Mm. <laughs> Cancer. And that cancer, excuse me, Pisces. It's fun time. <laughs> it's fun time for you. Uh, focusing on your fifth house this week, uh, focusing on play, focusing on putting yourself out there, dating even potentially, that's actually going to help you a lot um, when it comes to Capricorn energy and helping you with any frustrations you've been having around your 11th house. So I actually feel like it's almost, you might have potentially been having some like writer's block, essentially, like a form of that, or like a rut a little bit. Um, oh, when it comes to, yes, like kind of like writer's block, but also when you're trying to figure out what you want. I'm trying to figure out what you want. Um, there's also a little bit of gloomy energy I'm feeling with you. So focusing on your fifth house, again, fun, play, spotlight energy, Leo-like energy, flirting, dating, just have fun. Don't overindulge, but have fun. No, my fishies like to drink. Just have, just have fun. Um, it's gonna help you a lot with getting clarity on that. It's gonna help you uplift your mood. It's gonna help you kind of get out of a little bit of gloomy energy, but also it's gonna help you to see things from a different vantage point. I'm feeling like a perceptional shift is gonna happen with you if you do focus on your fifth house. Um, don't lose heart. I want to say don't lose heart. I really think that's going to help you. Now, where you're going to find a lot of confidence is your third house. Talking, mingling, meeting people, making friends. Um, that's going to help you a lot. I do feel learning with you too, Pisces. But I feel like it's through communication. I feel like it's through people. I feel like it's through people. 
Yeah, it doesn't feel solo. It doesn't feel isolated. It feels like it's through people. So have fun this week. Keep your mind open to what people are telling you, communicating with you, sharing with you. I also feel like learning about financial investments might actually make you feel really good this week. Um, less stressed out. Less stressed out. So focus on financial investments. Focus on having fun. And you're going to have some breakthroughs when it comes to your own depression, gloomy energy. I'm actually hearing despair and doubt. Um, and what your role is, that just came up too. And what your personal role is in the grand scheme of things moving forward. Some of you guys have really been struggling with your personal mission and how you fit into that in the context of the collective. Interesting. Um, you might be putting too much pressure on yourself there, Pisces. Just saying. All right, so we've done the water signs. Who are we doing next? Earth. That came in really loud. Earth. Let's start with Virgo. Since we just did Pisces, let's do Virgo. It should be the opposite of Pisces, right? Let me make sure that's right. If Cancer is 11th. Can I do math? Yes, that is right. Yeah, it's completely opposite. Okay. And then Capricorn. And then Taurus would be ninth house. Yes, that's right. So for my Virgo risings, your Cancer should be 11th house, Capricorn should be 5th, and Taurus should be 9th. Interesting. Similar to Scorpio. Very similar to Scorpio. You're going to be finding a lot of grounding and stabilizing this week. Um, excuse me. Uh, through higher learning, through travel, through introspection. Um, also, especially when it as it relates to Aquarian energy, and I say that because Cancer is your 11th house. So by nurturing like aqua energy, nurturing your ninth house, um, oh, it's going to help you to feel more accepted. I feel like you need to embrace your uniqueness, or I don't know what the hell that was. I feel like you need to embrace your uniqueness. I almost feel like part of a spiritual journey for you is really just to find more comfort and confidence within the self, more more faith um, that you're doing the right things, more faith that you are whole and complete in within yourself so you can feel more comfortable around people. You can feel more comfortable just letting go and just kind of having fun and just kind of being a little bit more relaxed. Yeah, Virgos, I feel like you've been struggling with being seen. I feel like you've been really struggling with putting yourself out there. I feel like you've really been struggling um, even creating, like creating something and saying, yes, I created that and having people talk to you about it. I feel like you've been struggling with that. You need to embrace your uniqueness, nurture that, love that, love the freakiness of yourself um, and know that you are loved and that you're doing everything fine and you don't need to be anything other than what you are. Okay, but like I said, focus on the ninth house, focus on Aquarian energy in the context of 11th house, right? That's why I say aqua, because Cancer is there for you, okay? All right, Capricorn or Taurus? Let's do Taurus. I have a feeling yours is going to be fun. Taurus, let's do yours. So obviously, your first house is going to be your grounding force. That's why I said, like, oh, it's probably going to be really fun. Um, <laughs> let's see. Cappy is ninth. Cancer is third. Oh, fun depending on how you look at it. Having a lot of confidence in the self, I think, is going to be very natural for you this week. I feel some rebellion energy there. I feel a little bit of like, like really not, a, it's funny, kind of opposite of Virgo. Like, I'm not afraid to be different. I'm not afraid to be me. This is me. This is me. This is me. And if I got to do something different for the betterment of me, then I will do it. Not in an ego way, not in a selfish way, but just a very matter of fact kind of a way. I do think, though, nurturing your third house, that's where cancer is going to be for you. Um, nurturing the third house. I feel like it actually might be a little challenging. Uh, I, I'll be honest. I think it could, it could lead to really good benefits. 
but it might be a little challenging because I feel like that's a lot of talking with family or even about family. Some of you, some of you, there's going to be a learning of ancestry that goes on there as well. And that's actually going to lead you to the ninth house where you're going to have some personal spiritual breakthroughs for yourself. And I actually am hearing activations. I'm hearing activations with that. Uh, some of you want to get into education or be a part of education, maybe changing education, the educational system. If that is the case, I do feel like exploring, not ex exploring your background, again, your ancestry, having conversations with family. Uh, it's almost like rediscovering you and your origins is gonna help you to be better when it comes to being part of an education system or being a mentor for other people. But I do feel like you have a lot of confidence in yourself this week, which is the fun part. I like that. That's a, that's a very fun thing. I feel like you're also very excited for changes. You might be changing a lot yourself because Uranus is aspecting your first house. Um, in a positive way though, very positive way with this full moon. And you're gonna lot of, get a lot of clarity on how you can do that how you can be a teacher, how you can be a mentor for those who want to be there. Um, any of you who've been struggling with your own spiritual journey or even struggling with travel, moving potentially, I just feel movement there. I feel like Eight of Wands energy there. Um, that's gonna become more clear. Okay, okay. Capricorn, where are we at? Oh, I do have time. Okay, I was I was really concerned. I was, like, I was not sure about that. So my Cappy Risings. See, if I can write. First house. Uh, so Taurus would be your fifth house. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Mm. Mm. <laughs> My cabby risings. Yes, emotionally nur nurture yourself. Emotionally nourish yourself. Um, I do feel though that there is some growth, some expansion of the self by way of bonded relationships, as it says here. Cancer is your seventh house. Capricorn is your first house. Taurus is your fifth house. The grounding force for you in all of this is going to be fun and play creativity, putting yourself out there, fifth house energy. That's going to be something that gives a lot of confidence. I actually, I can feel work there. You guys, <laughs> Gabby's, I can feel work. Um, you might get excited about projects. I do want to say yes, have fun with that. Focus on that if it brings you joy. Um, but there's also a need to really bring people into the mix for you here. But nurture yourself first. Oh, Cappy, for some of you, this is a really big lesson. You got to put your air mask on first. It doesn't matter if you can do something for other, other people. It doesn't really matter if you can show up, be the anchor, be the person who takes care of the household or family or another person. You got to take care of you first. So um, in an emotional capacity, like taking care of your soul and obviously the vessel too, but making sure you are doing that and making sure that you're having very open, honest, and vulnerable conversations with the people you are bonded to. There is a need to be emotionally honest at this time, which I think is where you're gonna have some challenge. But if you can have it in the context of fun, like again, fifth house energy, then do that. Capricorns, you might really be breaking away from people this week. Um, if you really move into that, like, how do I say? Um, being emotionally honest, not, not showing up as such a powerful, I am your anchor, kind of a force, you're, you're not going to be nurturing codependent relationships and those will most likely fall away. They might not fall away in a pretty way either. Um, Capricorns, you're also going to find more authority in the self this week, potentially, if you allow yourself to be really open and honest and vulnerable with people you are bonded to this week, especially being vocal about your feelings and things like that you've been struggling with or maybe has compromised you when it comes to relationships. It's gonna give you some power back. And I, I feel stronger authority. Capricorns, you might really struggle with some authority issues or authority figure issues, and that might also come up as well. But 
make sure you leave room for the fifth house. That's going to be your grounding force. That's where you're going to have a lot of confidence. You might actually have a lot of confidence with dating and flirting this week, but people that you're really close to or know you really well, not so much. It's going to be kind of the opposite. Um, so interesting. Interesting. Did we do all the earth signs? We did. We did. We did. We did. Let's see. We have air and fire. Let's do air. Let's do some air. Okay, let's do Gemini's first, which means Cancer is second house. Ooh, Cap is eighth, which would make Taurus 12. Yeah. Gemini's, I don't think you're in for an easy ride. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just gonna be honest with you because Venus is actually transiting your first house. For most of you, it all it always depends on like what degree you know you are in your rising sign. So again, adjust these accordingly if need be. Um, but Venus that has like the polarizing could go either way when it comes to relationships, like really successful and positive, um, fruitful, or just like an illusionary mess and self image issues and all of that. That's going to be in your first house. And then Capricorn, the full moon is going to be transiting your eighth house. Focus on the second house. That's where Cancer is. Focus on the second house. Focus on nurturing that, which is going to be your finances, your own personal sense of security and stability, your foundation, um, what can set you up, right, to be, to be stable and to be secure in your life, materially speaking. So nurture those things. It might require you to have to nurture that through family, and I do feel strong feminine energy there. Um, might also, you might also have to be nurturing feminine energy specifically within yourself and without um, to facilitate that. It's going to show you something about your own shadow. Uh, you might have some shadow work coming up this week with Capricorn being in your eighth house, but I think it's going to be positive. It's just going to lead to growth, but I do feel a lot of feminine focus with you. Yeah, I feel a lot of feminine focus with you. Uh, make sure you're spending time creating sacred space as well, because Taurus is your 12th house. That's supposedly where you're going to be finding the grounding force there, which is closing things out, which I think is good. But that, like, looking at this for you, Gemini, Sag is going to be interesting too. Um, yeah, that tells me get strapped in for some shadow work, or get strapped in for some truths to come to the surface for yourself that will liberate you and lead you to growth, but it's not going to be pretty. And you are going to close out some habits. You're going to close out some programming. You're going to let some stuff go there. You might even let some people go there. But focus on the second house. Focus on getting your home situated, your finances situated, especially when it comes to what emotionally makes you feel okay within your home. Again, creating that sacred space. Allow yourself to be open to having conversations with feminine energies and with family to, to really let some truth come out because I feel like it might be triggering but it's gonna show up in your eighth house in Capricorn. And it's gonna show something about you, okay? Which is only gonna be good for growth, but Taurus in the 12th, you're gonna be able to let things go and close things out, especially karmic energies. Also Capricorn being in the eighth house, also karmic energies. Um, so strap yourself in, it's gonna be fruitful. So let's just move on to Sag, which Cancer is the eighth house. Um, and Capricorn is the second, ooh, and Taurus is the six. Mm. It's interesting because it feels indulgent. It feels a little dark, not necessarily in a bad way, and it also feels kind of fun. I actually want to say for Sag, tread lightly here. I want to say tread lightly here, especially if it's like you're engaging in a lot of like romantic sexual energies. Tread lightly. I feel like Sag this week is exploring a little bit of your, your darker energies, the things that you also are ashamed of, but that you don't necessarily have to. There has been concern and worry about money. I do feel that with you, Sag. Like there's death that's, that's very prominent. And with Capricorn being in the second house, you're going to get clarity on that. But if you keep attacking it from a place of fear and anxiety and control, it's, it, you're going to get more of the same, okay? So I think you do need to take a back seat and get into more of that cancer energy. Um, 
But with it being in your eighth house, feeling a couple different things there. I am definitely feeling like a fun indulgence, things that are emotion that make you feel like emotionally safe and satisfied. So be careful. There's a very fine line between this makes me happy and I need this to be happy, right? It's a difference of I'm living in joy. Oh, the camera just glitched out. It's a difference of I'm living in joy and I'm, I have a coping mechanism or addiction, right? It's a fine line there because that could even be codependency in the eighth house and that can be kind of intense. So walk a fine line, but allow yourself to explore the parts of you you have yet to explore. The things you perceive as shameful or dark I encourage you to go there. Um, you might really encounter a lot of darker feminine like energies, darker distorted at feminine energies. I really feel that within family, or you might be realizing um, the consequences that has had on you, the effects that's had on you, and why you haven't allowed yourself to accept yourself fully and all of your the things you're ashamed of or the things you haven't allowed yourself to go to. Um, you might attribute that to darker feminine energies within your family or externally to you. And again, also just transmuting that darker feminine within yourself, male or female, doesn't matter. Um, that's actually gonna help you have a breakthrough in your second house, which is going to be about your long-term sense of security. So I feel like it's actually about really facing your darker insecure parts of you, the things that you are really ashamed to let people see about you or know about you, so that you can actually be more confident and secure with establishing your own stability that people do see about you i do feel um i feel positive changes with work and finances that will be as a result of that because you're going to have more confidence in yourself because you've accepted yourself more okay um and taurus being in the sixth house that's going to be grounding for you routine stay on top of routine stay on top of your daily tasks don't lose sight of that that's actually going to be very comforting for you it feels very virgo to me you might have for some of you you might have strong virgo placements in your chart um but it is sixth house energy, which is the house of Virgo. But that's where you're gonna find a lot of grounding is routine, getting your daily tasks done, like having like, I work out and then I eat and then I shower and then I do this and then I do that, right? Like having that's gonna be really, really nice. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> Fill my throat. Mm. We got 30 minutes left. How many signs do I have? One, two, three, four. Okay. Mm. Let's keep it going. Um, let's do Leo. Let's do Leo next. Leo rising. <coughs> mm. <coughs> okay. Is that the 10th house? 10th house. Yeah, Taurus is going to be 10th house. Wow. Leo, for you, I'm looking at health. That's what I'm looking at for you. <coughs> Excuse me. Overall, physical, mental, emotional, financial health. Financial is definitely there too. It's like, it's almost like, like doing a checkup on your life of like, is this right? Is this healthy? Is this facilitating happiness? Like check, 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 check. Like literally taking your life to the doctor and being like, where, where, where's my life at? Where's my physical health at? Where's my emotional health at? Where's my financial health at? What is the status and the state and the, yeah, the stats of, of the different facets of my life right now? And what can I do to improve that? And what can I do to improve all of that to get to a more harmonious, joyful state of being? Wow. Cancer is your 12th house. Capricorn is your sixth and Taurus is your 10th. Focusing on the 12th house, which is isolation, illness, resolving uh, cycles, karmic energies. It's the void. It's the house of the, it's the void house where things are resolved to come back to the first house, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. With it being in Cancer, there's also like, <coughs> there's also, <laughs> oh my it's like a double water energy there because 12th house is pisces so it is also a spiritual dreamy house but cancer so healing so leo focusing on healing focusing on healing emotionally mentally physically spiritually even financially that is all there that is all present it's almost like what can i do to heal and recover a loss 
or imbalance for myself this week. That's what that is. Focusing on that is gonna help you with Capricorn, is gonna help you with your sixth house. When the full moon comes and transits your sixth house, have you been focusing on these things this week, even preluding this week? <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. <laughs> when I channel, sometimes I burp. I've also been drinking a lot of water and coughing. Anyway, sorry. When the full moon comes and transits your sixth house, um, I, I do feel like financial worry is going to become more clear on how to like overcome that, how to deal with that. I feel the solutions, I feel the solutions, the problem solving, and things that you can implement in your daily life that will improve your overall physical health, mental health, emotional health, spiritual health, financial health, all of those things. I really feel that very strongly. Taurus being your 10th house, it's where you're gonna have your confidence, it's where you're gonna have your grounding force, and where you're not gonna be afraid to change. You're not gonna be afraid to shake things up in your 10th house, which is essentially, like the path of your life, right? Tenth house is its legacy, um, <clears throat> its vocation, its career, it's what you're doing that affects and stabilizes your entire life long term, right? That's the that's the tenth house. So it's yeah, it's like it's kind of perfect setup for you, Leo, to do a, a checkup on your life and heal and recover any imbalances or illnesses of the mental, emotional, spiritual, or financial origin <clears throat> or physical. And every single day, what you can do to get things back to where you want them to be or to get them to where you want them to be. And the Fullman Capricorn is going to show you that. Okay. Very nice. Um, so let's do Aqua. Because <laughs> I checked the time. Aqua, I feel like is going to be very similar. Mm. Mm. Fourth house. Wow. Yeah. Very similar for Aqua. Aqua, focusing on, on your day-to-day, -day, the things you're doing every day, I feel like there's, there's a need to focus on doing them consciously, intentionally, almost like bringing in a spiritual component that is giving you more emotional security. I feel like there's a mundane energy that you've been battling, a boredom, if you will, um, a little bit of like my life is a little lackluster, like it's missing some magic. That's kind of how it feels to me. And if your life's missing some magic, just go about your day to day and put magic in it, right? That's like, that's what I want to say, like to focus on with, with your sixth house. like. You can make anything magical. You can make anything a little ritual if you want to. Like even just drinking water, you can bless it. <laughs> you can bless it, do a little spell over it, drink it, feel good. Um, yeah, I feel like you actually just need to bring the magic back in your life, in your day-to-day -day routine to, again, bring in that consciousness um, and state of awareness. Uh, some meditation or incorporating a spiritual practice in your day-to-day -day might be very beneficial for you. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Capricorn's your 12th house. Full moon's gonna be transiting your 12th house. Bringing the magic back in your day-to-day -day life is going to overall improve your, your sense of connection to the self, your sense of connection to God, spirit, source, whatever word you wanna use for it. It almost feels a little bit like you might be feeling like you somehow got taken offline, like spiritually speaking, and like this is up coming back on, okay? Taurus is gonna be your grounding force in the fourth house, which is home, hearth, family. It's also vehicles and things like that. Um, I'm hearing sanctuary, predictability. Having something in your life that is like a sanctuary, like a home base and predictable is also gonna facilitate that. So if you don't have that right now, Aqua, if you've been lacking that, um, wouldn't be a bad idea to to nurture that, okay? It almost feels like you need a really strong anchor of home or home base, like I said, or sanctuary. It doesn't have to be fancy, but something where no matter what happens, you can go back to it. Something that's really, really predictable. And as long as you have that, you can go and be fantastical and magical in all aspects of your life, and it's going to lead to a beautiful spiritual breakthrough for you and healing and clarity and all of that. And overall, just make you feel like life is magical again, okay? So, hold on. I feel authority issues here too for you. 
So I think I was going to be really working through that. Um, I feel like a threatened energy there, like where you felt threatened or confronted by authority figures and how that's probably built up a little bit of a programming um, or expected response. Um, and I do feel anger there. I almost feel like it's a big trigger for you. So it doesn't matter some anger issues there, but I do feel healing around authority figures um, happening there. And you are aqua, so it's not too surprising, but I do feel that, okay? All right, so last two, 20 minutes to spare. Okay, <laughs> let's do Aries. Let's see. Oh, duh, Aries. So Cancer's your fourth house, Capricorn's your 10th, and Taurus is your second, okay? Yeah. <clears throat> Venus is in your third house. I want to say bring the love. Bring the love into your home. Bring the love into your relationships. Bring the love into the self, but really in your environment. Like your immediate environment where you welcome your loved ones, where you spend time with your loved ones. Make sure you're putting a lot of compassion there, a lot of empathy there, a lot of love there. Like really take time to like to hold that space, hold that energy, just be in that, embody that, and see what happens to your 10th house. See what happens with work and vocation and career and your own path of where you're headed. Um, I feel big breakthroughs with money for you. Big breakthroughs. They're really highlighting the North Node. North Node is going to be aspecting the full moon, like I said, um, and bringing clarity to that for all of us. But I feel for you, it's financial breakthrough, financial clarity. My, I'm hearing it might require sacrifice, might require sacrifice to pull off the kind of security that you're looking for, but it's only going to come by way of bringing in a lot of love and compassion and empathy to your intimate relationships and especially within your home. It's almost like shelving it for a minute. You know, it's like, let's put that up there. I'm going to go focus on this. It's like, and when you, you know, when you shift your focus, it's like you can come back and see things differently. Like it has that kind of feel to it definitely has that feel to it. Seeing what else wants to come out here. I do feel struggle in communication. I do feel that. I do feel a little struggle there. Um, you might perceive people attacking you. Try to bring the compassion. I know, I know, I know. Try to bring compassion. Try not to take it personally. And I totally get it. It's really hard, especially if it's in your face. Especially if it's like a lot and it's like not going away. I totally get it. We're all human. We're all human beings. Um, but I do I do feel fighting. I do feel conflict. I do feel miscommunication happening. But if you can sit in that cancer energy. And practice non-judgment. Which again, easier said than done. And then you're going to be pleasantly surprised. There's something about that. There's something about the shift in focus there. That's really going to lead to some financial breakthroughs. But I, I do feel like it might take risk or sacrifice. I really feel that strongly. Some of you guys might actually be about investing in something totally new or creating something totally new, putting your money in something totally new. <laughs> Almost like a reset. Yeah, almost like a reset. Yeah, that's what I feel for you. All right, moving on to Libra, last but not least, <laughs> since I'm desperately checking the dime. Okay. So Cancer is 10th house, Capricorn is 4th because you guys are opposite. I always find Aries and Libra, the risings, to be so interesting, right? Because it's like Aries, like your houses are the signs, right? Like how they are accordingly, like home. <clears throat> and Libra, you're the total opposite. So it's like the signs are in their opposing houses, which I think is very fascinating. Anyway, moving on. Mm. Oh, God, can't, Libra. I feel like you actually need to get away from family. <laughs> I normally would not say that. Um, ugh. Cancer is your 10th house, Capricorn is your 4th, and Taurus is your 8th. That 8th house as like a good grounding force for you with Cancer being the 10th house that you need to feed. But Capricorn being the 4th. Uh, there's something about that where I, I really feel strongly like giving some space to family, giving some space to people that you feel um, 
yeah, it's family. It's it's strong family or feminine energy. Like I want to say that you feel in service too. Ew, that didn't even feel good saying that. Yeah, so Libra, Libra Risings, anybody you feel in service to? Ugh. Space. Space. <laughs> Create some space there. Um, I want to focus on Taurus for you first. Taurus in the eighth house, very indulgent. There's a very indulgent energy, which is not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing to indulge. It's not a bad thing to feel good. It's just, you know, moderation, right? Um, <clears throat> I do want to say watch the spending, like really, really watch the spending. But I also want to say like, have have some fun flirty time. I think that's actually going to make you feel really happy. Um, I hate to say it like this, but I just have to be honest. Like I feel fling with you. I feel fling. I feel like a fun little you meet someone somewhere and it's like you hit it off and it's like you just get to talk to them get to know them flirt dance whatever and you go about your ways I'm not saying you have to sleep with them but it's like i feel something very sexual there but i don't feel like commitment like i don't feel that like i feel fun I feel fun so have your fun i think that's really important um nurturing the 10th house like that with cancer though Yeah, I feel like you need space from people you feel in service to because I think that's how you've been experiencing family and loved ones. This is not going to be resonating for everybody, but <clears throat> for those where you've been experiencing loved ones and family or even feminine energies, I say feminine because there's that service thing where that I don't like. Um, <clears throat> you haven't really experienced um, like true, unconditional give and take of, of emotional support. Like that's been lacking and I actually think focusing on what that looks like for you what that looks like for you what you need out of relation oh that sounds, sounds like we're saying that what you want <laughs> what you want out of relationships like that the people who are supposed to be your tribe the people who are supposed to like show up and be there emotionally supportive for you what that looks like for you long term focusing on that I think is gonna be really important also focusing on <clears throat> any passions um, and especially new, I'm hearing new, 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 new passions of yours and having some solo time there, creative time there, very beneficial. It's going to bring a lot of perspective to family. It's going to bring a lot of perspective to your fourth house where you have Capricorn. I feel like around your fourth house, I don't know who I'm tapping into right now. I feel like it's like a chunk of you. So again, this is not being for everybody, but my Libra risings, the Capricorn fourth house energy, it feels kind of suffocating. It feels, it feels like it's it's dripping in control and stifled, restrictive energy, and it doesn't feel good. Just being really honest with what I'm picking up on. So you're gonna get a lot of clarity there if you do kind of focus on bringing some like of that love and that passion and what you want to see as a tribe, what would really work for you in a tribal setting long term all the while making sure you're having time for some fun and some play and some sexy time sacral time however you however you want to however you want to say that however you want to say that i do also want to say that libra risings be very careful not to look for love through that energy right now through sexy energy right now it will most likely not pan out well i think astrologically speaking it's it's a fun energy it's not a a love energy that fun Taurus eighth house energy it's it's lust it's not love and even then it's like it's fun we're all human beings we all need to blow off steam like that every once in a while um some of you might ha feel tempted to have secret investments that just came up some of you might feel tempted to have secret investments do your thing no judgment here I'm not gonna say that's bad or not bad um, but I do feel that with you. Okay. All right, guys, I do got to go. This was fun doing it like this. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys miss the cards, you miss the cards. Um, I've actually, I've got a couple minutes. Okay. I got a couple minutes. I will pull, I'll, 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 I'll pull cards. <clears throat> Any messages or insights for this week? But it's going to be fast. <laughs> it's going to be fast. And then I'm going to go. Let me know if you prefer the old way or if you like this way. This is just a fun little experiment. I 
any messages or insights for the collective for this week <laughs> cards are talking mm. Mm. five of pentacles struggle 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 Ugh, that feels like doubt that feels like insecurity feels like pes pessimist pessimism pessimism but i'm i'm hearing the word struggle more so than anything so like i said we've all kind of been struggling in some some way shape or form or another and the full moon capricorn is going to give us clarity in where we have been struggling personally mm, king of pentacles and it seems like for a lot of us it is around finances it is around sense of security which makes sense it's like i was feeling that with uranus taurus energy the north node taurus energy like things are uncertain are we going to land on our feet or are we not going to land on our feet? What are we going to do financially? How are we all going to live? Like, I could really, really feel that very strongly. Um, this was like an energy of feeling kind of like stuck. Like, I don't really know what to do anymore. Um, what I've been doing hasn't been working and I don't know what else to do. This week is creative solution time. This week is Uranus meets Mercury. All kinds of new ideas are going to be coming through. But if you are also taking time to nurture your own personal passions, you're going to have even more of a probability of being able to monetize something that you are passionate about or to offer something to be of service to people that makes you really happy and brings you satisfaction that you haven't thought of before or have forgotten about before or some part of society told you you couldn't do that. You're going to realize you can, okay? Any other messages or insights for this week? Mm. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> We've got the moon in the world. Basically Saturn right here, my voice. Saturn right here. Capricorn. Moon and Capricorn. Um, but wow. Wow. This is big, big fat change. <clears throat> the world is massive change, like big life cycle chapters kind of a change. Um, but with the moon being there, I can feel that confusion. I can also feel <clears throat> the uncertainty from over here of like what are things going to look like what am I going to be able to do I think most of us are not going to be able to see it until collectively more has settled like more of the dust has cleared more has been like taken away pulled away and once that settles we're going to understand exactly what we're working with so we can actually move forward. You know what I'm saying? Like we've had a lot of change collectively, a lot, especially here in the States, been all kinds of stuff going on, a lot of distractions going on all around us. It hasn't been settled enough to understand what we can even do yet. And that is coming. <clears throat> That's coming and the full moon is also helping with that. Okay. Some of you, some of us, some of us still have some wrapping up to do of, um, Self-limiting beliefs that just came in as I put those cards down. <laughs> Self-limiting beliefs will keep you in the Five of Pentacles. And that's where the distorted perception comes in. We, we all need to see ourselves more accurately. We all need to see ourselves as the King of Pentacles that we all are, as the powerful, capable beings that we all are. We're all capable of this masculine energy. We all, Every single one of us, regardless of your gender, we're all capable of that King of Pentacles energy. We're all capable of being an authority figure, a leader, um, somebody who can manage an empire. Like we're all capable of that. We all have the integrity of that. We just have to remember and we just have to hold ourselves accountable to that and not let anything convince us otherwise, okay? Any other messages or insights for the collective? Okay, now we have mm, four of wands in reverse and the eight of cups in reverse. This is emotional attachment. This is something that um, <clears throat> I have been feeling in the collective as of recently. Like, and I think I really picked this up with the earth signs, which makes sense. A lot of earth sign energy this week too. But like, there's still some things we're holding on to emotionally or in our own programming about ourselves, about our own lives that keeps us from having stability, that keeps us from moving forward, that keeps us from experiencing the life we want to actually have. Some of you, this is also being still emotionally attached to instability, like instability, instability being emotionally attached to things that don't even work for you personally it's time to let them go especially if they are faulty relationships overall we have the hangman it's no wonder this is coming out right 
because it's that feeling of being stuck. Underneath that, Nine of Cups. Wish fulfillment is just on the other side. It's just on the other side. Even if it doesn't look how you thought it would look, it's okay that it's gonna look different. It's okay if it's it's a whole new plan than you had before. <clears throat> Excuse me. But you, we all need to have this spiritual, emotional realization that we don't have to stay there. We don't have to be attached to instability or faulty relationships or the old us. We don't have to. We can be this king of pentacles. We are this king of pentacles. We are that powerful. We are that capable. We are that accountable. We have that much integrity and we can handle it and we can move, move forward. We can move forward. We can move on. We can create the new earth for our collective. We can create the new earth for us. Our personal little heavens on earth. We can do that. Okay. Okay. I gotta go. I'm late. <laughs> Uh, thank you guys again for coming out. And again, let me know if you guys like this format or not. Um, it was fun. Personally, I kind of liked the off-the-cuff astrology challenge. It was really fun for me. Uh, but I will see you guys later. Don't forget to check out the website, Patreon and Vimeo. Have a good week. Have a good night. Take care.